And this is the Red Tiger F77 Dual 4K Channel Dash Cam. Yep, you heard right. 4K for the rear, 4K for the front, 5 GHz Wi-Fi, and a ton more. And on this video, I'm gonna show you the contents of the kit, as well as walk you through the features of this dash cam, and then we're gonna take a look at some driving video that we can see how well it actually performs. And as always, I have placed a link in the description down below to this dash cam in case you'd like to get one for yourself. And now let's take a look at mounting. There is double-sided tape right here. I'm gonna peel this back and I'm gonna place this on the windshield. View angle is adjustable. This is how far it goes in this direction and this is how far it goes in the other direction. And lastly, the mount does allow us to remove the dash cam if needed. What's also interesting is that there is a memory card bay. However, there is no need for a memory card because the F77 actually has built-in 128 eMMC of flash memory. So you may be wondering, what's the point of the memory card bay? And it turns out that you can actually transfer the files that are internally in the dash cam out to an external SD card. And the rear camera is probably the star of the show. You can see that it almost looks like a mini dash cam, and that is because it enables that true 4K rear camera performance that we have not seen before. Now to mount the rear camera is meant to be installed on the inside of the vehicle, double-sided tape. I can peel this back and attach it to the vehicle. And the view angle is adjustable. Notice how far the mount can move. And also, if I put the mount in this orientation right here, I can mount the rear camera against the vertical surface. And finally, and this is something I don't see very often, is that the rear camera can separate from the mount in case I needed to remove it from the vehicle. And for power, they have included this automotive adapter, and the adapter does have an extra USB port right here, that way we can power both the dash cam and something else. And we are presented with the front of the vehicle and on the smaller screen, the rear camera. And we also get icons for the different things that have been enabled on it and the day and time. Now, what you'll find is that the icons actually go away after a little bit. And this is something that I really like. Notice how it leaves us with a very clean screen, just a simple view of the road. And I wish more dash cams did that. Now, tapping on the screen brings up the icons and that is because this is a touch screen. However, there are buttons in the bottom that can allow us to do pretty much the same functions that touch it on the screen. Now I'm going to swipe over here and that's going to take us to the screensaver mode. Swipe one more time and takes us to the rear view. Swipe one more time, going to take us to the front view. Swipe one more time and it's going to take us to that split view. Swipe one more time, returns us back to the standard view. Also interesting is that some of these icons are actually interactive. For example, the microphone icon turns off audio recording or re-enables audio recording. Wi-Fi can also be turned on or off from this screen. And also we can turn off the voice commands and we'll test those commands out in a little bit. Let's also take a look at the icons in the bottom. And the very first icon is a picture icon that allows us to take a picture. The second icon is again, another way to turn off the microphone or re-enable the microphone. And this icon right here that looks like a lock allow us to flag and protect the video that is currently being recorded as important. The next icon right here allows us to enter into this menu where we can look at playing back the videos and the settings and we'll come back to that in a little bit. And there are also physical buttons located in the bottom of the dash cam and they have the same function as the icon. So notice how this button takes a picture this button is going to turn off audio recording and re-enable audio recording and so on for a total of four buttons. Now, the buttons are somewhat flat and recessed over here, so it's, it, they're a little bit hard to find in my opinion. So I find a lot easier to operate the dash cam by just touching the screen than using the buttons. But now let's try out the voice commands. Turn off screen. Turn on screen. Turn off recording. Turn on recording. Show rear camera. Show front camera. Turn off audio. Turn on audio. Pretty cool. Now let's move over to playing back the videos. I'm gonna tap the playback icon. And as you can see, the videos have been sorted out into front camera videos and rear camera videos. Now there are three folders for each. 
The very first folder contains just normal video, potentially us just driving around. The second folder contains video of things that may potentially involve car crashes or that we flag manually. And the third folder is gonna contain photos. Now the same thing applies for the rear camera videos. But let's go inside one of the folders and I'm gonna tap the video and the video is gonna begin to play back. Now you could navigate the video files using these icons, but also notice that if I tap the power button that's on the side, that allows me to delete the current video, delete all videos, or lock and protect the current video or unlock it. But now let's take a look at the settings because this is where the fun begins. We're gonna start with resolution and here we get the famous 4K for the front, 4K for the rear, or we can decrease that if we want it to fit more onto the memory card. Well, in this case, the built-in memory. Sound recording can also be enabled or disabled. And also we get a G sensor, which does have three levels of adjustability. And this is what can potentially allow the dash cam to detect when you get into a car crash. We also get a fatigue reminder in case we wanted to be notified after a certain period of time to take a break. There's also a screensaver feature that can turn off the dash cam screen while it continues to record. Their voice control can also be turned off or on from the settings menu, but here's where we can also see the voice commands that are supported by this dash cam. Next up is parking mode. Now this does require the optional hardwire kit and we get two choices, impact detection or time-lapse recording. If we use impact detection, the dash cam is gonna be triggered by anything that impacts the vehicle hard enough when it is parked, or we can enable either a 12 hour or 24 hour time-lapse recording. The watermark that's shown on the video can also be customized. You can turn off or on the date, or if you did not wanna have your speed shown, you can turn that off. Or same thing with your GPS coordinates. If you did not need that, you can turn those off. Speed units are also adjustable between kilometers per hour and miles per hour. And let's look at the languages because there are several choices in here in case you wanted to change it from the default one. Moving over to the next page of settings, Settings. Here's where you can enable or disable daylight savings time. Super convenient if you live on a place that observes that. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the app. And as you can see, it connects via Wi-Fi and shows us a live view coming from the dash cam. Now a couple interesting things, I can turn the phone in this direction and then we can get a larger view. But also tapping on the screen brings up icons on the side and the very first icon allows us to turn off their recording remotely using the app and you can see on here that it says recording stop i'm gonna tap that one more time and the second icon right here is gonna allow us to take a picture and this microphone icon allows us to turn off audio recording you'll see it pop up right here and also this icon right here allows us to switch between the views here's the rear of the vehicle then tapping that one more time gives us that split view where front right here and rear over here tapping that one more time switches that so now the rear is larger and the front is smaller tapping that one more time brings us back to the front let's also take a look at playing back the videos and that is done with this icon here and we are given two choices to access the videos that are on the built-in memory or the external sd card i'm gonna go ahead and select internal memory now the videos have been sorted out into three different folders the very first folder which is called loop that contains video potentially of just driving around, maybe nothing exciting happened there. The next folder is gonna contain any pictures that we taken, and the next folder is gonna contain potential videos involving car crashes or anything else that we manually flag that's important. But what about this third icon right here that says copy? Well, if you put a memory card in the dash cam, then you can export the videos out from the internal memory to the external memory card. But let's go ahead and play back a video. I'm gonna go ahead and tap that one, and it begins to play back automatically. Again, we can always turn the phone in this orientation if we wanted to see it on a larger screen. I'm gonna go ahead and pause that. And there are a couple other icons in the bottom that again allows us to download the video or to delete it or just to take a screenshot of it. Moving over to the gear icon that allows us to enter into the dash cam settings. Now, not all of the dash cam settings are accessible via the app. What I think that they've done, they selected the most commonly 
change settings that people want to change. And for example, the resolution, we can change that from the app, loop recording time, the G sensor sensitivity, and so on. But now that I've shown you the features of the app and the ones that are built in onto the dash cam, let's take a look at some driving video, including the audio test. And this is an audio test of the Red Tiger F77 dash cam, and I am sitting on the driver's side seat. And this is an audio test of the Red Tiger F77 dash cam, and I'm standing outside the driver's side door. And I really didn't expect for this dash cam to be in the market for at least a couple of years out from now. And I don't mean specifically the Red Tiger brand of this model. I just mean in general, a dual 4K channel dash cam has some tremendous challenges that it has to overcome. And also there is primarily the belief that most accidents are gonna come for the front. So the incentive to develop a dash cam that has 4K for the rear has not really been there and also the increased cost. Now there's a couple very interesting things of how they managed to achieve 4K, and these are important, especially to you as a consumer. The very first one is the size of the rear camera. In order for them to achieve that 4K resolution, there is a lot of hardware that has to be incorporated in it. Normal rear cameras are typically half the size, so you can see how much massive the rear camera is to be able to achieve 4K. Also, so currently the F77 only supports this camera to be on the inside of the vehicle. It is possible at some point we'll see a 4K rear camera for the outside of the vehicle, but again, it is likely gonna be a pretty fairly large thing to be installed on the outside, which may not look too pretty, but you'll get 4K. The other interesting thing is that built-in memory, those 128 gigabytes of eMMC memory, why do we have those and why we cannot use the external memory card bay as the default recording location? The restriction being basically a bottleneck is that, that there's gonna be a ton of information coming from the rear camera and a ton of information coming for the front camera, both at 4K. And trying to shove both of them into a single memory card would have been a huge bottleneck and will likely require a ton of compression and potentially degrading the image quality of both to be able to write them to a single memory card, which will make that dual 4K cano pointless. So my original thought is that we were gonna see the dash cams come out with 
two memory card bays. One memory card bay to support 4K for the front and one memory card bay to record the rear stream. Now, the way that they did it is kind of similarly because technically we do have two memory cards in here currently right now. We don't really need the external one. We only need the internal one but the internal one being a EMMC memory is tremendously faster because it's literally built in on there and the type of memory allows to write a ton of data to it versus an external memory card. So that built-in memory is what allows for them to be able to record both the rear at full 4K and the front at full 4K at the same time to a single memory place and that is also the reason why I think we are not able to select the external memory card bay to be the default recording location because it's not going to have the speed required for the dual 4K data streams to be recorded to it. Another interesting thing is how the rear camera is connected to the front camera. On traditional dash cams, we typically see a very thin cable connect them both and that thin cable is limited to 1080p because it uses AHD, which is analog analog high definition standard. And that standard is supposed to be updated eventually to handle high resolutions. But the last time I heard any news on that was such a long time ago that I don't think we're gonna be seeing that new standard anytime soon. So how do you overcome that? Well, they went to USB-C for both the rear camera and the front camera. So now we have this thick, fairly thick cable that connects them both and allows for that larger data transfer of that 4K signal. And I'm pretty sure there were other challenges that had to be overcome to bring this dash cam to the market. And I am excited to see how well it does. And I'm excited to see if people really want 4K for the rear and if they are really willing to pay the premium price for 4K for the rear. Now, we'll tell you, I am a fan of the thinner cable, the one that is limited to AHD because it is easier for me to route throughout the vehicle than the thicker USB-C cable. Now, as some dash cams out there, I have already transitioned to USB-C cable for the rear, even though they're only using it at 1080p. I think they're kind of future proving themselves or seeing that consumers want USB-C everywhere. I am a fan of the USB-C connector, but I'm not a fan of a very thick cable. So hopefully we'll see either a softer or thinner USB-C cable come out, be developed in the future, or if you don't really need 4K for the rear, I'm okay with AHD because of that thinner cable. So remember, I placed a link in the description down below to this dash cam in case you wanna get one for yourself. And if you guys have any other questions regarding this, please put that in the comments. Also, if you found any part of this video helpful, make sure you hit the like button to support the channel and stay tuned as I have a lot more dash cam reviews coming up. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.